Do you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. You're gonna- Whoa, Jay, Jay, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, but none of this movie takes place in the jungle. Oh. Well. Do you know where you are? You're outside San Francisco, baby. And we just watched Return Fire Jungle Wolf 2 on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Welcome and hello to another exciting episode of B-Movie Mania. I'm your host this time around, Jason Hulls. And in the Jungle Wolf pack this week, we have Paul Brooks. Good evening. Hold on. Let me crack this open. There we go. Nice. We have Mike Hayes. Pew, 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 pew. Bang, bang. Pew. <laughs> and we have Crazy Chris Hudson. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, that sounds like the kind of enthusiasm that you get out of the main character of the movie, we watched this time around. We watched Return Fire, Jungle Wolf 2. Two. That's right. Two. We skipped the first one because, um, well, I just found Jungle Wolf 2 and I saw it on YouTube and I thought it was pretty funny. I, and I don't even actually think this is the second one. No. I think this is the third. It, well, you, the third. well, you actually do get the first film, Jungle Wolf. You kind of get like a brief version of that in the opening credits. It is a little see, yeah. I, I, I thought this was a really a bit Josh Kirby ish because a little uh, bit. <laughs> the, the the Jungle Wolf two like is apparently like a three part movie series where like the first part is those kids from school and then it, like that whole part where they get kidnapped happens before it even jumps in. So like then it's confusing and then it doesn't end. It's not resolved by the end. It's I, I'm feeling like I got Josh Kirby here. I, I well, cannot, okay. I cannot <laughs> handle this without some quick takes. <laughs> All right. Should I should I do a quick IMDb synopsis first? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Just to give people a sense of because we don't want to Josh Kirby our listeners, right? Mm -mm. So I'm gonna read the IMDb synopsis provided by Ivan Wong, and we thank you for that, Ivan. Thanks, Ivan. Steve Parrish, the Marchster, referring to Ron Marchini, returns home to the San Francisco area after his many travails fighting in Central America. All he wants to do is see his young son, Zach. However, gang boss Patroli has it out for Parrish. He sends all the baldest, fattest, oldest goons after Parrish to exterminate him. But Parrish is one clever man. Somehow they manage to kidnap Zach, so Parrish teams up with his love interest, Terry, to fight the bad guys and save Zach. Shortly after that, he finds Zach, and they team up to take on the bad guys. Also, corrupt government agent Carruthers, Adam West has his own stake in both the fates of Petroli and Parrish. So that's kind of just a nice little summary for you. Uh, Can we just say that Adam West teamed up with Petroli? Uh, There's a lot of teaming up going on here. Uh, well, okay, I can, Mike, yeah, you're right. Mike, I know where you're going, sort of. Let's do quick takes. Quick takes! Chris, what was your quick take? There's a lot of slightly uncomfortable killing. <laughs> and by that, I mean that people who die seem mildly inconvenienced <laughs> by their gunshot wounds. And about like, you know, I'm say I was mildly inconvenienced by watching this movie. So, hey, I had a lot in common with the goons. Okay. All right. Paul? Uh, yeah, the Rockford Files called. They want their soundtrack back. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we're really going to get into the soundtrack. I hope we do. Yeah. It was, it was pretty great, in my opinion. It was fantastic. It was great on the Rockford Files. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Mike? I love me a good child warrior. 
<laughs> you know, I actually didn't consider the fact that you might gravitate toward the child warrior, but hey, Dr. I can Otto, see why baby. you'd say that. Yeah, yeah, I can see why you'd say that. All right, my quick take. B-movie maniacs in the jungle kill to survive. B-movie maniacs at home kill for a profit. <laughs> so true. So true. Uh, real poignant mm-hmm. part of that film, isn't it? Yeah, so... You know, there's been some talk of fighting and killing and children here. So let's let's uh, let's get into this. Um, we open on a house with an old man named Jim. He's fixing a four wheeler, and I think right off the bat we get a little hint of what uh, Child Warrior Zach is like. <laughs> oh yeah. Would you agree, Mike? <laughs> yeah, that kid sneaks up on old Jim and scares the shit out of him. <laughs> With the gun. And I believe yeah. Jim also has a gun, right? Like, they immediately both of them have guns. Well, this is America, San Francisco, so obviously... Of course. Yeah. We're going to have every time I work, Every time I work on my car, changing the oil, listening to some tunes, cleaning it out, got my trusty sidearm. Does Victor sneak up on you with a gun? My, my kids sneak up on me constantly. I... <laughs> and do you say, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so we kick into the opening credits that, uh, I mean, is it safe to say just it's kind of looks like a B-movie Rambo kind of thing? Jungle yeah, Wolf 1. Basically. But but it's amazing <laughs> because it kicks into the credits when the, chi- when the little child boy says, Jim, <laughs> Will my dad come home? And then cuts to like the back of our hero's head, opening a sword he will never use again. Like it's great. Which I believe was the end of Jungle Wolf One, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 so, I'd say the end of Jungle Wolf One has enough explosions to really give Hologram Man a run for its money. Mm. It, there was a lot of action in this. There movie. were a lot of yeah. I wouldn't say it's as nonstop. high budget action as as Hologram Man, but man, <laughs> no, they. No. They really go for the the speed in this movie. (laughs) That was cocaine, actually. We see Steve complete his mission by getting um, an ambassador to a helicopter, and they leave him. Yeah. And, yeah, then he draws his sword, and the screen freezes, and it says... I love you, Dad. I love you, too, Zach. (laughs) But can you imagine... Let's say that just hypothetically speaking, you are really big... Uh, Ron Marchini fan or a uh, hypothetically big, well okay <laughs> you are a big Ron Marchini fan and you're also a big fan of this franchise right so you've seen Jungle Wolf 1 you've seen Forgotten Warrior and now you're really excited to find out how he's going to get back to San Francisco in Jungle Wolf 2 you're going <laughs> right? to be sorely disappointed <laughs> what happens Paul <laughs> he just shows up <laughs> yeah because i believe he's surrounded by like gorilla fighters right mm-hmm. yeah and they have guns and he just has a machete as i'm saying without seeing jungle wolf one though i mean maybe that's the maybe maybe the helicopter leaves jungle wolf in the jungle like like at the very beginning of that movie well I, and the rest of the movie is is him trying to get to uh san francisco could anyone find jungle wolf one i i, I hunted everywhere no. i couldn't find it yeah, oh, me, you know, didn't look. me and Mike were attempting to do some research. Attempting, I say. Trying. Because Mike tried to watch Jungle Wolf 1, and I tried to watch Forgotten Warrior, which is the first part. And I got mm-hmm. through about half of that. I found one version on YouTube, but apparently we couldn't find uh, Jungle Warrior 1 anywhere. Did you which notice is... that uh, in, in Forgotten Warrior, he's wearing the same yellow shirt that he wears yes. in Jungle Wolf 2? Yes, he is. If you get Ron Marchini in a yellow shirt, look out. (laughs) I really like, I really like that continuity. Yeah. Yeah. It's his action shirt. I was wondering if the, (laughs) if that's even the first movie, because the movie before that is Ninja Warriors and he is credited as Steve. Yeah. I really wonder. They don't list the last name. Yeah. Steve Parrish. No, remember Chris, actually Chris and I were chatting about this a little bit in, in that movie he's listed. It says Ron Marchini next to his character. It says, uh, Steve, but in parentheses it says as Ron Marchini. So okay. it's Ron Marchini <laughs> playing Steve, who is playing Ron Marchini. <laughs> and then we also might as well mention there is a Jungle Wolf three, uh, also starring Ron Marchini, but apparently oh. playing a completely different character. 
Hmm. A completely different Steve Parrish. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just yeah. all over the map. It, it really is. Before we really get into the plot here, I want to uh, to see what you guys think. I mean, it, were they really going for some sort of like Greek mythological kind of odyssey sort of feeling with the, the Jungle Wolf series? Because you've got, okay, so the Vietnam War is Steve Parrish's Trojan War, right? And so he wins the war and he's trying to get home and it takes him forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the impression I got. Yes. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good film analysis there. That's a, Very nice, that's real, Chris. That's good. <laughs> um, so he's on this boat in San Francisco Bay, and he has this voiceover that pretty much lays out everything. He's talking about too much pain, too many killings. Um, I believe in that there's a insert shot of his girlfriend getting shot in the head in the jungle um that will not be the only insert shot we see of his girlfriend no no and and what weird places we see it too (laughs) (laughs) um and then he finally says zach i'm coming home in a voiceover so from this little bit even just so far do you guys kind of get what i said when i said okay it's kind of like if neil breen directed taken oh god i had yeah well yeah a little bit a breen I got such a Neil Breen vibe from this movie. Like, if Neil Breen made action movies in the 80s, this would be what he made. Yeah. yeah. Marcini even kind of looks like Breen. Yeah, yeah. even, like, the like delivery. Like sounds like him a little bit. Yeah. 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 So, maybe that's one of the things I gravitated toward early. Have any of us seen Marcini and Neil Breen in the same room at the same time? <laughs> no, maybe... Jungle Wolf 4 is his move into uh, real estate in Las Vegas. I, I don't think Marcini's made a movie since Neil Breen started making movies. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of cross-cutting here, because Zach is really into four-wheelers. <laughs> so he's riding around, oh and Steve God. enters a mall. Because yeah, he's going home because he wants to find his son. He can't wait to see his son, so he's going home. To a mall. But he's got he's to gotta look nice first. He's so got go to the the, hit up to some There's shots, really no reason he goes to the mall that I can think of. I, other than I, maybe to use a phone. I think that's the case. I think he got back, because you see him on the little like boat or whatever, and mm-hmm. then he's suddenly at the mall. I think maybe the, the mall's near where he got like dropped off. I am pretty happy about how they laid things out, though, because this is where they introduce uh, Gallagher. <laughs> Gallagher's in the movie. Slash Gallagher? Not Slash Gallagher, the comedian oh. Gallagher. Oh, the racist. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh, maybe we'll just call him Gallagher with muscles. It is not oh, Gallagher. God. No, it's he not looks Gallagher. An awful lot like him. Yeah. <laughs> if only it were Gallagher. A group no. of goons. And at this point, we don't really know why they're chasing Ron. I had no idea why anything was happening. Oh, at this yeah. Point. I mean, that, that pretty much goes through most of the movie. But <laughs> these goons follow Ron into the mall. One of them looks like Gallagher with muscles. <laughs> and um, when Steve is on the phone with Zach or leaving a message, he realizes he's being followed. So he goes into the bathroom. And oh, anybody yeah. want to Jeez. talk about what happens in the bathroom? <laughs> hey, this is really a nice uh, little piece of. <laughs> you know, a, a technique that you, the listener, can use if you find yourself uh, in a bad situation in a mall bathroom. All you need is a flaming roll of toilet paper and you're good to go. <laughs> That's a good point. That is a great point, Paul. Good safety tip. Yeah. And did, did you guys notice when the goons bust into the bathroom yeah, that there's yeah, a it, dude shaving was, just the top well, of his head? Yeah. It was no one going to notice a bald guy shaving his head. Yeah, he's yeah. like, man. That Gallagher guy looks all right. Let me check that. Let me check that look out. Give, it, give me the old shine top. But basically the goons go like stall to stall trying to find Ron Marcini and they have like a gun and like a tire iron or something. Tire iron. Yeah. There are so many guns in this movie. Why did this one guy have a tire iron? He drew and a he short was, straw. Did he, did he just fuck up one point? I mean, there's enough guns in this movie to go around. They armed like 8,000 thugs at the very end of this movie. Did they not have one more gun for this guy? Did, did he yeah. shoot himself in the foot the last time? It's like, you can't be trusted with this. You this get is... the tire iron. This is the first time where we get the sense that there will be no suspense in this movie, though there will be plenty of intended suspense. I disagree completely. That whole scene with the the flaming, the flaming toilet paper, basically they get to the last stall, the tension is through the roof, and 
Like like they bust the door open and a f- piece like a roll of flaming toilet paper just comes out of nowhere and distracts not only all the goons but everyone watching as well. It worked really well. <laughs> it did work really sure. well. The I did not expect worked. the flaming roll of teepee. The tactic worked great. I want to use it someday. But what I'm saying is, as they were slowly kicking open each stall with some weird uninterested like the Rockford Files music in the background, that no point was I like, oh no, where is he at? Like, it was just, it was just comically long and drawn out. Oh, it was so, it was so good. And you see, it was great. The shot, too, is like the stall door gets kicked open, open, and Ron Marcini just throws the flaming toilet paper right at the viewer. It's so good. It's like a big fireball. Like that, yeah. I don't know how long he was holding that toilet paper, but it's, it's up in flames. Yep. So, um, and so, yeah, so he gets away. He kind of fights them a little bit. And then we're, again, cutting to Zach because goons show up at Jim's house to kidnap Zach. So this starts a sort of back and forth chase as Steve is running through the mall. And these guys are openly carrying weapons all over the mall, by the way. So, Jay, Jay, you know what they say? Like father, like son. Oh, you know what? And that phrase... Chris, would you say that at the heart of this film, it's it's really a, a story about a father and a son? It's it's really a bond, a father son bonding movie. I would agree. Bonding over murder and explosions and of double crosses. It's very just a touching. Great, great, very very heartwarming film. Yes. So um, outside the mall, we see um, Steve is, is is outside. There's a woman on a car phone. And we have police pull up and a goon police, that runs outside. <laughs> yeah. you, said, you said police. I think you need to specifically say a policeman. A policeman. Oh, a policeman said police. There, there is gunfire and, and, and mayhem going on in a mall. <laughs> an enclosed space with, with hundreds of humans in, in there. And a, a single police officer shows up. Yes. And so the goon, or let's see. The police pull up, the goon pulls a gun, and shoots the police officer. Then Steve <laughs> shoots the goon and steals the police car. And then we get into this big car chase. We still don't even know why they're chasing Steve. Yeah. Hey, at, yeah, at this very moment, I wrote down, why the fuck is any of this happening? Yeah, you really don't still know. Still no idea. You Still no still idea. No idea. Uh, to this day, I don't think I know still. No. no. <laughs> and this brings me to a part of the film that I really liked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike, you want to talk about the four wheeler on the bridge? Yeah, well, well, you're talking about this cut back and forth between the the fight scene there and then this other thing that's going on with Zach. And what's going on with Zach is that little fucker just pops on his four wheeler, just rides off. But yeah, then then he rides around. Yeah, well, then he gets to the bridge. Remember, he crosses the bridge and everything's fine. Yeah, it's just a bridge. No, everything is not fine. It's for a the normal person. bridge. The four wheeler goes across. The car goes across. It's a bridge. No, the car no. does not go across. No. Uh. Uh. <laughs> what are you talking about? What happens? What? This is, now, now, now. When we say bridge, though, it's not like some it, like huge like no. river spanning thing. It's like five feet off the ground over a ditch, a creek at best, a little creek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the car <laughs> being generous drives into. It does drive off the bridge into the creek. <laughs> yeah, and the the driver screams, and the car just completely explodes. <laughs> yep. Do not get into a fender bender in Ron Marcini land. <laughs> hey, hey, now I think there's a very good reason that you've kind of, they don't really explain very well in the movie, but you just kind of have to figure it out by watching how many goddamn grenades there are in this film. <laughs> okay. And I can only assume that that car was packed, packed with grenades. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy was going to toss a grenade. He had to pull the pin or something. going to throw it at the kid, but he fell off the bridge. Maybe that's why he drove off the bridge. He was distracted. It could be. Grenade falls on his lap, explodes, car, boom. Now, this is the part. Okay, so I may have been yeah. writing my notes at this point. Does Zach, like, get into a wreck also? Does he, he somehow falls off well, the floor, you know, he right? Just kinda, he just, he just, he just, I think he had an aneurysm. <laughs> I, yeah, he just, he just, <laughs> just got off. off. It was, it was he just confusing. Fell off his four wheeler. He might. I don't remember exactly. And then a second <laughs> no. car shows up, like <laughs> to grab him, right? Yeah. Okay. Good and thing uh, we'll sent those reinforcements. So, so Zach, in Neil Breen taken fashion, does get kidnapped here, taken. and then we s- taken. 
<laughs> Paul, now, when you were watching this, I think you put a message to us on Facebook that said, I hope you guys like pipes. Indeed. Was that it? Indeed. What, what happens here with Steve? Well, we have uh, a, I guess, chase scene slash gunfight um, at this sort of nondescript series of tubes <laughs> and pipes <laughs> and tubes and more pipes and more pipes and more tubes for a solid 45 minutes <laughs> to the soundtrack of <laughs> for 45 minutes. And then what happens at the end of the chase scene? He kind of just gets in a car and leaves again. <laughs> yes. <Here's> later. <laughs> so, what hey, hey, in between though, you miss a lot of like thug death. Yeah. Including my favorite Husky Boy. <laughs> is that his name? Is that, is that what Husky you named throws, him? Was he... he throws a grenade through one of the pipes, and it rolls behind more pipes, and Husky Boy is looking for him. <laughs> and here's the grenade fall behind the pipes, so what do you do? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go look over. Now, it's only like the pipes only waist high. No one's hiding back there. <laughs> but he goes to check it out. <laughs> God. Yes. Also Was that features... the guy? He looked like Ron from Parks and Rec, but like chubbier. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It also features a lot of Ron Marchini sort of like on top of these tubes, making <laughs> next to no noise somehow. But they're like, <laughs> not like, they're plastic, basically. I mean, how like he's not falling off of these things doesn't make any sense to me. Hey. He is a trained jungle wolf. Oh, oh yes, right. lots of and they, tubes. They're in the not jungle. known for falling off their tubes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you're right. After he kind of picks them off one by one, he pretty much just gets in the police car and leaves, right? I, I mean, I don't even <laughs> like, think that everyone's yeah. dead. He he kills like some of them, and then he's like, "Okay, I'm I've had it with this." <laughs> yeah, it, that is. That is basically the rest of the movie, is <laughs> Marcini wanders around a warehouse, picks off a couple dudes, then gets bored. Like, it's mostly what happens from now on. That's Jungle Wolf, baby. <laughs> this isn't like the jungle. I'm tired of this. <laughs> so, okay, so then uh, the next scene cuts to Terry, the gar who is in the car on the phone outside of the mall when the uh, policeman got killed. And the blonde woman. She, the blonde woman, which is, for the longest time, what I had her in my notes as, just the blonde woman, because they yeah, don't they say, say her, her name at, like, the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, she delivers some papers to Adam West's office. This is the introduction oh, Batman. to C C Batman. Yeah. Or Carruthers, as Batman likes to be called in this movie. So, Steve calls Hartman, who I think is supposed to be a cop, or an agent in Carruthers' office. Yeah, yeah. That's the impression I got. That's really quick. He's in another one of the movies. <laughs> he's in yeah, he's in the first Jungle Wolf. His name is different. Oh yeah, it's Hartman <laughs> instead of Hargrave Hart or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> but are we so, are we supposed to get the impression that Parrish uh works for uh Carruthers? I think so. I think he did. I think what happened was Jungle Wolf 1 I think they say earlier or later on that he did that job in Central America with the ambassador, yeah. and that's what we see from the first Jungle Wolf movie. But none of that actually really makes sense. I, no, you know, I take I take it back. There is a lot of suspense in this movie. Mostly the suspense your brain has in trying to figure out what the <laughs> fuck is connected yes. to the tissue of all this. None of um, it checks out. Well, next we meet kind of the main bad guy. We meet Patrolli. Or Patrolli. Patrol, yeah, it's his name, Patrolli. I thought it's Patrolli. The drug guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, a crime boss who lives in a warehouse. And <laughs> No, not just that. He lives in a warehouse at the airport. <laughs> Is it an, at the airport? <laughs> I think it's at the airport. Not a second of it looks like it's San Francisco. How about this? If, if it's not at the airport, then <laughs> the very last scene does, makes no sense at all. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, so anyway, Gallagher comes back empty-handed. And he's got some explaining to do. <laughs> he does. Oh, he's just trying to pay the bills. He's got a wife and kid to look after. He does have kids. Um, Steve er, has caused Patrolli problems in Central America. So this whole thing links back to Central America. And Gallagher just wants some more men. But the crime boss 
It's pretty nice to Gallagher before shooting him, right? <laughs> well, that's yeah. not very yeah. nice. Well, that's not. But he does say, what is he? Doesn't he like offer to take care of his family or something? Yeah, he says, I'll take care of Maria and the kids. Maria and the kids. Yeah. And then shoots him promptly once in the spleen. So have we found dead Jim yet, or is that coming up? That's right now. Go. Take it. I think it's right now when uh, when Jungle Wolf hitchhikes home. Yeah, that's Jungle right. Wolf finally gets home to find his son, his beautiful boy. And <laughs> and he, he the beautiful boy seems to be missing, and he finds Jim dead. What the hell? Hey, at this point, I don't know any really anything about this movie, but I do know one thing, is that Jim, his dying wish was to be buried in his yard. Oh, yes. Yeah. And thankfully, shirtless Steve... Yeah. honors that final <laughs> wish <laughs> doesn't call the authorities doesn't call any family members ah oh, this is good enough yeah it's confusing 